So far, I've talked about the notion of an IPS or intrusion prevention system with respect to uh, some of the more basic functionality at a high level. What I wanted to do in this video is talk about some of the more advanced functionality that you might find uh, within an IPS. And, and I use the word advanced, but I think that oftentimes people talk about some of these notions within the context of what's called a next generation IPS or an NG IPS. Uh, but I didn't want to use that label here because some of these capabilities uh, that, I, that I think of as advanced uh, may not really fall into the you know, more formal definition of an NGIPS. Uh, and likewise, there may be certain functionality, certain pieces of an NGIPS that I'm not going to really talk about in the context of this video, even though uh, there are IPSs out there that do have that functionality. Uh, so really, I, I think of this as really thinking about some of the more uh, subtle things you might want to think about in the context of what an IPS can actually do. Uh, so to begin with, uh, let's kind of review very briefly what, what is considered kind of standard in an IPS. What does a standard IPS provide you? And by standard, I mean, what are, you know, if anybody out there is going to claim they've got an IPS of any sort, what can you absolutely expect to see in that IPS? Or what should you expect to see uh, at a baseline? So I think the, the baseline should be that the, the IPS itself kind of works at uh, wire speed. So works at wire speed. By that, I mean that uh, it's not going to cause a bottleneck in traffic. It's actually going to be able to process data fast enough and be actually in line. Typically, a standard IPS is going to have uh, signatures at the very least to catch all the common threats. Uh, you'll need some kind of an update mechanism as well that allows the signatures to be updated efficiently and, and effectively. And then, you know, in, in general, really those are the two kind of main main characteristics you can expect. And I, I think that these are, uh, you know, the, this is kind of par for the course. If you don't see this in an IPS, you're going to be in, in trouble. And actually, maybe one more category of uh, that I think is relevant to talk about would be that... Uh, uh, maybe being in sync with the firewall, so actually firewall uh, synchronization. Firewalls kind of represent uh, an initial line of defense where uh, it, it plays more of a whitelist role, and, and, and an IPS would might might see traffic that comes after the firewall. But I think it's good for the IPS and, and firewall to be able to talk to each other effectively, or, or to be able to take intelligence that you might gain from uh, an IPS and implement that at the firewall level to kind of have these two devices work together uh, in concert. Now, aside from that, I think there's a handful of characteristics you'd want to consider beyond just the ability for an IPS to detect threats. And maybe these are more meta characteristics, and, and I think that uh, and this is maybe one way to think about them. You want to think about kind of operationalization. So operationalization is kind of a complicated sounding word, but really, but what I mean by this is is making it uh, making the IPS work effectively for a particular environment. And there's a handful of things that go with that. There's a notion in IPS is called uh, tuning. And tuning is really where you, you make an IPS kind of work well within the context of a particular network that you're trying to protect. And, and obviously, there's no such thing as one standard network. There's no kind of one-size-fits-all. And so uh, a big part of, of getting an IPS up and running is figuring out how it can work most optimally within your particular network setup. Okay, and so a big part of that would be uh, not just being able to tune, but maybe to have some automation built into the tuning. So it would be automation as well. I think that's a, a big consideration for, for most people. Uh, the second thing that's related perhaps to tuning is the idea of, uh, and maybe this is this is more uh, making the, the IPS work well for your environment, is to have the ability for custom rules. And, and we talked about one way you can detect threats using an IPS is by having rules that can look for threat characteristics. And, and typically, those rules might be provided by a vendor who, who ships an IPS to you. But you may also want for your particular network, for your particular enterprise, the ability to create your own rules that, that work effectively. And so having not only the capability of custom rules, but also maybe some of the, the functionality around making it easy to create those custom rules, uh, that could be very valuable as well within the context of, of having a more advanced IPS. And the third thing, which, which I think is maybe this catch kind of goes beyond what a traditional IPS or even what an even an IPS at all is meant to do, but I think it's relevant in the context of overall security, and it's certainly something to consider, would be basically considering uh, or being able to integrate what are called acceptable use policies. Okay. So acceptable use policies. And the idea here is that maybe there are certain uh, applications that your company or your network just does not want to allow in general. Maybe there are certain like file sharing applications or communications applications, etc., maybe instant messaging applications, and you may not want any user on your network to be using these applications, even though the applications themselves may not be malicious, uh, but for other reasons, you may not want anybody to use them. 
it would be convenient, and, and, and those, use, those reasons could have to do with security as well. What you can do is if you can define those within an acceptable use policy, and most organizations have policies like this, you could then enforce those policies using an IPS, and, and maybe the, the keyword is not just having an acceptable use policy, but really the enforcement, the enforcement of an acceptable use policy can happen using an IPS as a device. Okay, so I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to continue and I'll do a follow-on video where I'll talk about more characteristics of sophisticated or advanced IPSs.